Welcome to the Art of Strength and Mind podcast with your hosts, Brandon Duff and Eugene Trufkin. This is a podcast about healthy living. But really, in reality, you don't even have to work out to lose body fat. One thing you should definitely do, like first thing right off the bat is I would focus on the client is basically educate him on the fact that they just need a slight caloric deficit. So today's episode, we were the guests and we were interviewing each other. Uh, this is, um, what did you think of the very first podcast? I thought it was really cool. Like uh, kind of I mentioned, like what I mentioned in the podcast this I have only known Brandon for about a month or so. So I actually got to know him a bit better um, while interview him for the podcast as well as him interviewing me. Yeah. I mean, I, I've known about you for about 10 years, uh, seven years now and always thought very highly of you just by insta stalking you and that sort of thing. So now I get to be on a podcast with you. So I'm super excited about that. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And this is our first podcast. Eugene, welcome to the Art of Strength and Mind. This is our first podcast and I'm very excited about it. What about you? Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> you welcome as well. <laughs> as well. It's your podcast as well. Both, uh, yeah, definitely. It's our podcast. Co-host. Yeah. So we are in the Art of Strength, which is a gym in Irvine. And I train out of this gym, but you train, where do you train? Uh, I actually train at a gym, maybe like a block away called Next Level Fitness at the moment. Um, Yeah. So it's in Irvine, California as well. So very close to here. Yep. Cool. Cool. And why did you get into training? Um, You know, it's, it's been one of my very high, like core values from day one. So like I was even, uh, my dad was like a huge um, wrestler in, in Bulgaria. And I was even lifting weights with him, like at five years old, going to the gym and working out. Um, yeah, so I played, uh, hockey for a very long time and then, uh, I got into lifting weights and then, uh, basically my mom wouldn't like buy me supplements, you know, when I was like 16, 17, 18, she's like, oh, that stuff is going to give you cancer. And who knows, maybe she's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so basically I try to go, uh, try to go get a job. So I tried to go get a job at Ace Hardware in like Irvine to be like a cashier. And I was like, I think 17 or maybe turning 18 at the time. And uh, I think like two days later, um, I was working out at 24 Hour Fitness, uh, like right off Culver. And then one of the one of the managers at the time comes up and he's like, uh, hey, man, I checked your like uh gym check-in record and it shows like you checked in like 470 times like last year or something and uh we're looking for for trainers and we would kind of like pay for this certification program and then you can just be like a trainer at this gym and we just need you to be here like part-time uh and i was like yeah okay and then i did that because i was kind of looking for a part-time job in the meantime uh just to basically help transition into college because i felt like um takes me quite a while to like acquire like information. So I'm like, oh, I won't be able to be like a good student uh, if I had to work like a full-time job because it would be too tough to balance like full-time student plus full-time job. So it was like a good opportunity. And then I started being a a trainer from there. And then I think I've been doing it already for uh, like, I think 12 years, 12 or 13 years already. So kind of stopped counting after a certain point. (laughs) So why did you actually get into fitness? You went 423 times, you said, to the gym. What was the cause of that? Why did you want to get into shape? Um, You know, like for me, it was just, um, it was always one of my top four values, you know? Like I really just like working out. Uh, I liked um, moreover the kind of structured uh, not like strict, but structured lifestyle, like it kind of, uh, it provided, you know, like having a, uh, structured day-to-day routine. Like I would get up at this time, then go work out, have these like four meals and go to sleep at a predictable time, kind of live a very health, health conscious life lifestyle. Very also, routine lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. And I also, I like the routine a lot. And also I enjoyed, um, you know, training my mind to be disciplined into that routine instead of being kind of like wishy-washy with your schedule, which is okay if people are into that, but I just wanted to kind of like be uh, kind of like a routine person because I like my routine and my schedules. And um, uh, so, yeah. And then I enjoyed the little things, you know, Um, obviously it kind of like makes you look better, which is like a huge 
in my opinion, like energy booster, because yeah. you know, when you like look your best, like you feel your best too, Definitely. instead of like waking up and then, you know, you look shitty and then you kind of proceed throughout the day and, uh, just everything is kind of worse than it should be, you know? So, um, yeah, I just kind of just like it for it's the unconditional sake of just liking like it. it. I like how it makes you feel. And, uh, I feel like, um, I structured pretty much my whole entire, uh, like schedule or goals in life to kind of facilitate that, uh, that workout routine and that health conscious lifestyle of eating like organic food, sleeping at the appropriate times, kind of hanging out with, uh, people with a similar mindset, all that stuff. So, and did you have any, any challenges while coming into that healthy lifestyle? Was there anything that you had to overcome? Uh, I feel since I did it, uh, since my dad got me into it at such a young age, uh, it was uh, like very gradual and I didn't feel like I had to change dramatically because I was kind of like born into that environment as yeah. well. Uh, so for me, it also came naturally. Like I never really liked drinking or like doing drugs, for instance. And also I tend to be fairly like antisocial. A lot of people get a lot of energy from socializing, yeah. uh, but my energy just kind of goes like, like downhill really quick. And it takes a lot of energy for me to socialize with people. So, and I feel with the health conscious lifestyle, I think like being too social could be a roadblock for like a lot of people, you know, like when you go out and eat, it's tough to uh, kind of eat well. Like even if you're going to like high-end restaurants, I mean, sure, you can order like wild caught sockeye salmon, but then they're cooking it in industrial oils, oils or even industrial oil, like genetically modified oils, you know, so you think you're eating like a really high quality food, but because those oils kind of seep into that food, I mean, it's also like unhealthy. It makes it unhealthy that way. Definitely. And we um, don't know what's going in there versus if you cook it at home, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so I feel it was harder to not live that lifestyle for me than it was to live that lifestyle. I felt it was just like very naturally inclined just to kind of just to do that, you know, study a lot on psychology because, as you know, the mind is connected to the body. They kind of should be viewed as one unit, in my opinion. So kind of like. When did you come to that conclusion that, that the mind and body are kind of connected? I mean, yeah, I think that's totally true. That's 100 percent true. I preach that to all my clients. But when did you figure that was kind of the aha moment for you? Um, I would say. Honestly, it's one of those things where I just kind of naturally got off the bat. I could already tell like, oh, if you're, if you kind of like aren't focused in the gym or don't know how to like focus your, like, intent, like for instance, like uh, not be on your phone in the gym or not look at the TV screen, but instead like in between sets, even little minutia details, like, um, you know, like you do your set and then you focus mentally on how your next set is going to be while you're resting for that next set visualization yeah those little kind of mental tricks and that requires like a tremendous amount of focus you know to not be distracted by external stimuli yeah. even today it's like more distracting than ever with like uh, cell phones and exactly TVs cell and phones and tvs the community and then, the gyms build yeah and just um so i kind of forgot your question i kind of go off on tangents but no no it was you, you were right on track about how the mind and body are connected and how we feel that when did you have that epiphany yeah. Okay. So, and you said you've already, you've always had that epiphany and that, um, that's kind of been your mindset since a very young age. Exactly. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, you have to, I guess, look at the skeletal frame, you know, like what do bones do? They just kind of hang there. Yeah. And then what do, how do they move? They move with muscle, but what moves the muscle, the mind, you know? So obviously if you have kind of like a weak mind or not necessarily a weak mind, you might be strong in other points, but mind that's not really focused on the goals of like, for instance, like we talked about like intense workouts, just to be very specific, then the workouts aren't going to be intense. Definitely. It's as simple as that, you know? So exactly. Yeah. And for someone say one of our listeners who maybe never had that mind muscle connection that you've been kind of blessed with, how would you, is there some kind of plan that? that you've created for your clients that kind of help them build that connection or how does that work? Yeah. I mean, in terms of the mind muscle connection, I mean, in the gym, you can kind of instruct the client of how to focus more. If you feel it's a, you know, client by client basis, if you feel like the client's like very distracted in the gym, that's something you'd want to kind of gradually coach them on and push them, not, not necessarily of telling them what to do, but telling them the benefits of learning to be more focused and kind of taking a few steps. Like for instance, I'm big into 
not letting my clients have their phone like while while we work out. And then if they're kind of um, trying to kind of space out in between sets, I always kind of try to reinforce that they should be kind of like focusing on their next set and stuff of this sort. But at the end of the day, all that stuff comes naturally as long as it's a uh, as, as long as it's a core like value and core priority in the person's life, and as long as it's kind of like in tune with the with the bigger picture in their life, you know, like what are they trying to like what what are they trying to accomplish in life? What's their purpose, meaning, legacy in life? And um, I always kind of stress like sometimes people are like, oh, um, you know, I'm just not into health and fitness. I'm just not into like working out in the gym or eating organic food or stuff of that sort. And I'm into, let's just say, like computer programming or doing startups or just working at some other place. And I always kind of try to emphasize that no matter like what your goal and legacy is in life, like mental and physical health should always be number one. And they should always be number one, not because I'm like in the health, in the health and wellness industry, but they should always be number one because how are you going to accomplish anything in life long-term, like with depression, you know, like a mental illness, like depression or how, or like a physical ailment, like, um, like high blood pressure, which could lead to various issues or severe lower back pain, you know, like, how are you going to, how are you going to carry out being a computer programmer with chronic fatigue, you know, like you can't program too much when you're just like chronically tired all day, every day, which kind of leads to like anger issues, sleep problems, and then et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I feel like no matter what you do in life, uh, like mental and physical health should always be number one all the time. Totally. You know, so. And what have you through all this, you've been doing it, like you said, for 10 years and you're an expert at this. What is what is your legacy? What, is, what are you hoping to accomplish? And what was your transformation? Uh, my transformation in a sense? Of where you have been as a child, where you were at five, and you know, how much have you grown since then? Well, I think weight-wise, like quite a bit. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't forget how much I weighed when I was like five. a kid, but I'm pretty sure uh, probably a little bit less than I weigh now. Um, in terms of like overarching legacy, uh, one thing I try to do is basically live by, I mentioned this like many times, but live by like my set of core values. So my set of core values, and I let that, that kind of dictate my legacy in life. So my set of core values are like, I see them as like a blueprint of whether I'm headed in the right direction or in the wrong direction, or whether I'm staying stagnant in any direction. So uh, like my core values would be, uh, for instance, have enough time to work out, you know, I, like I mentioned, I really like to work out. So I don't like to feel rushed during the workout. I feel like, uh, at times when I got too busy with clients, like having an overwhelming amount of clients, then I would have these short one hour lunch breaks, you know, and then you have to like rush through your workout and quickly eat something, maybe yeah. shower afterwards. And it's just, it increases your anxiety. It's not pleasant to do that. So, uh, to be more aligned with those core values, I kind of cancel it out a few clients. And typically I actually work out in the morning now, but when I did work out midday, I would cancel uh, kind of like a client midday. So I'd have a two hour lunch break, you know, and that would give me, uh, and I didn't have to drive to the gym because I was at the gym already. So that would give me enough time to get my workout in like thoroughly and enjoy it without feeling rushed or anything. Um, the next core value would be just having basically like enough time to continue education, to continue to read. Uh, so what I did was basically I set up my schedule where I basically work like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And then the days in between, I, I read books on either physiology, nutrition, psychology, like stuff of that sort, or just take courses like uh, continued education courses, basically like certification courses, as you know of. Uh, so that's huge, uh, because it helps keep novelty in my work and helps me bring a better service to the clients as well. Fine. And, um, yeah, the next thing, the next core value is having great sleep because you would be surprised how much quality good sleep adds to your life, oh, you know, just being energetic, like fully awake, not chronically fatigued, how like above and beyond that can take, uh, t that can take the quality in your life. So I try to make sure uh, core values be in bed at 9 p.m., read for an hour under like an Edison light, and then always wake up at basically like 6.30 or 7 a.m. to basically do my, do my morning workout. And uh, another, another big thing is, since you work for yourself, 
uh, just kind of working for yourself, you know, uh, that's a huge core value for me as well. Um, because I just feel every person is like, so unique, like your heartbeat doesn't even beat the same way twice. You know, there's not even like a single piece of leaf on like the same tree. That's the same, you know, everyone is so unique and different. I feel to, in my opinion, to really kind of carve out like the, the life you want, you just have to do it on your own, you know, because there's no corporation that's going to bend to your knees. So you're, have you achieved those core values? It seems like you do those every day, but like, what is the end goal for you? Is there some kind have you achieved it yet, or is it just to live life to the fullest? For you? Yeah, for me. So, I mean, to go back to your question, like what's your overarching dream? Um, so to live out those core values, I help those core values help dictate basically the direction I should be headed in. And the overarching dream is I basically just want to kind of gain mastery in my craft. That's huge to be able to, just to be able to thoroughly kind of help a person from the different vantage points of, of their health and wellness goals. Like for instance, you know, their spiritual health, emotional health, through nutrition, through working out, uh, all those, all those variables. So, and yeah. through those variables and through those coaching techniques that you've developed, you are able to help people get to where they want to be faster than they could on their own. Yeah. It, well, yeah, exactly. And moreover, um, I guess it's important to emphasize, like create lasting change as well. Because, Stable. Yeah. So for instance, I think later they're exactly back to where they were, you know, so there's no quite lasting, there's no, there's no great lasting change in like the client with, with the Definitely. current model. Yeah. That's uh, that's important. I mean, that's, that's what we, uh, try to achieve for all of our clients is we don't want to see them day after day for years and years. We want them to learn what we know and then have them take our, what we've taught them and use it for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And what many listeners don't know is I actually met Brandon like a month ago. So, um, so I was always interested, like, how did you get into, how long have you been doing this for anyway? So I guess I'll give you my little backstory. So I have been training for about 10 years now. Um, in high school, I played sports, but I wasn't really a big guy or small guy. I was just kind of normal. And, uh, but I always excelled at sports, but I always thought fitness was very important, kind of like you. And uh, I got into training. I went to a local LA fitness and I said, hey, what's the requirements to work here? And they said, you know, go get your degree and your certification and we'll, we'll take you right away. So I got um, all that was needed and got my certification through NASM and got my CES, my PES, my CPT and done like 20,000 sessions. Yeah. 20,000 sessions. That's a lot of sessions. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's um, a lot of rep counting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and timing and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So um, I got it into it because I didn't want to have like, I saw like my, my family and friends and, mostly like my grandparents and how bad their posture was. And they sat at desk jobs and did all that. So I didn't want to have that horrible posture and just didn't want to be at a desk job all my life. So I found that fitness was a good way to alleviate that. So I got into fitness really looking for one to make sure that I wasn't at a desk job and make sure my health was important. And I was taking care of my body because I was actively moving all the time. Um, but not only that, but I felt that one, everyone works out for one reason or another, but when it comes down to it, I feel like people say, Hey, I want to do it for a six pack or I want to have nice abs or I want to look good for this wedding. But when it comes down to it, I felt like it's bringing me happiness. And ultimately that's what people are striving for is to feel good about themselves and feel important and feel they have self-esteem. So I wanted it more for to create happiness and just that self-esteem. And I'd rather feel happy every day and excited every day by looking good and being, and being, uh, thinking of myself as someone who looks good and feels good versus thinking of what other people thought of me. And that's why I guess I got into fitness and, um, and so now I can teach other people how to do that. And how they can create their own happiness based on what they want to look and feel like versus what other people are actually like social media does, right? Like tells you, you should look like this person or that person. I think that's totally the opposite way you should and not try and picture what you should like 
no one's going to look like one of us because they're not us. We've been doing it for so long and the people like our clients should be more focused on how, um, how important they think they should look and what they feel for themselves. So I think that's why I got into fitness. So, yeah, and I think, I think that's pretty cool to hear that because kind of like what I mentioned earlier with nature being a novelty generator, yeah. everyone's different, you know? Yeah. And sometimes like I did notice on social media, I would post client progression pictures of like basically the client getting to 12% body fat, which isn't like jacked and ripped, you uh, know, but then like I would get easily, some, but easily doable, right? Yeah. Well, easily doable and maintainable. Yeah. But I would post like the person would start maybe at like 28%, like the average client that comes into me, I have, uh, I take like an ultrasound uh, of their body fat. Oh, wow. And basically the average client that comes in, they're like at 28% and I get them down to 12%. And then I would post this progression picture on social media. And then some people would message me. They're like, oh man, they're like not ripped enough. Like, why would you, why would you post that picture? You know, I'm like, dude, there's like a huge progression and like, uh, once again, like I mentioned, mental and physical health should be number one, but that also doesn't mean you have to be like Jack, you know, no, no, like no. all Arnold out. What I mean by mental and physical health being number one is that you're full of energy all day. You don't have like excessive body fat, meaning like for males, probably I'd say like on the safe side, like 15 and below, like ideally 12% would yeah. be a good number to aim for. Uh, that's, and you have like good biomechanics too, you know? So like, you're not, you're not having like joint pain. You don't have neck pain because you're kind of slouched over, like kind of like maybe I'm slouched over right now a little bit while talking on this thing. But um, yeah, you just have like a healthy body. You feel energetic. You don't need five cups of coffee just to be able to get through the day. And um, you're able to work out. You don't have like underlining anger issues or depression exactly. and anxiety, you know, because you feel so that, that for me right there is like a healthy individual. Yeah. I remember like when I was in high school and college that I would lift weights and I was jacked. I looked really good, but I wasn't really happy with what I was doing at that point. Like I sure I could lift weights and look good, but I didn't have like the mindset where I wanted to be. I didn't have really have that purpose. Like you were talking about earlier, my nutrition probably wasn't as best. So I was kind of feeling groggy really didn't um, eat well, probably was eating a lot of inflammation and in the foods like dairy and wheat and all that stuff, gluten. So I wish I would have known then what I know now, because I wouldn't have wasted so many years just kind of figuring all this stuff out for me. Like it's knowing that it is, you know, that mind muscle connection and knowing how the mind and body connection is made and how that works. And how nutrition plays a huge importance and how the mindset and confidence and self-esteem and how social media plays a uh, deterrence and toxicity on our daily lives. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, a lot of learning that has gone over the course of both of our lives and training. And, and now it's taking that knowledge that we both acquired and passing it on to other people that really need it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I just, honestly, like, I just like the lifestyle. Oh yeah. That's well, kind of, and I think that a lot of people, like our clients, I think they think that they just come in here for that hour and that's going to change their lives. And really it's the other 23 hours in the day that's really going to change their lives. Yeah, exactly. And I always try to stress, like I mainly focus on fat loss. So basically what I try to kind of like really educate clients on and really focus a lot of their attention is not working out. So as weird as that sounds, being like a trainer yeah, where, really where you spend a lot of time in the gym with clients, I try to kind of like really educate them on the fact that fat gain is a symptom of poor lifestyle and nutritional choices. Okay. It's not a symptom of basically not working out enough. I mean, that could be like a small part of it. You, as simple as it is, um, especially if you're kind of been out of the game for like five, 10 years and haven't been working out and just want to lose body fat and you're still on a tight schedule, like working 50, 60 hour weeks and you already have like super chronic fatigue issues. Like the last thing you want to be doing is working out. In my opinion, one thing you should definitely do, like first thing right off the bat is I would focus on the client is basically educate them on the fact that they just need kind of like a slight caloric deficit to make that weight loss, you know? So, which includes basically just improving their eating habits just a little bit. Yeah, and, but we live in an instant world. Well, yeah, exactly. But like the main thing is basically, um, you know, a lot of people, you probably heard this like a million and five times. They say, I just don't have enough time to, to work out. And Definitely. I would basically 
Well, first of all, that's kind of like a story they're telling themselves. And what that story is basically saying in between the lines is it's not a core priority in my life to basically respect my body, respect my mind, and kind of listen to its many, many cries for help. A lot of times people these days, they just don't listen to their body's many cries for help, you know, like back pain, chronic fatigue underlining anger issues, you know, when you're getting pissed off or short-tempered all the time, depression, anxiety, all these symptoms are basically your body's way of trying to communicate with you that something's not going right. And a lot of people, they just don't listen to it, you know? And then, um, I mean, they don't have to listen to it today, but trust me, it will make sure it's being heard sometime down the line, like in a, in a huge way. So, yeah, I mean, I know that with a lot of skin irritations or anything like that, people just cover them up, which just ultimately manifests the infection or the inflammation within the body and just causes worse issues down the road. Yeah, exactly. So in that case, I mean, the person's like, okay, they're showing, if a client's showing interest, but they're saying they're too busy. I think like one of the things to make clear is that if you just need to lose like 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and once again, you're new to the game, you kind of haven't been working out for five, 10 years, you simply need a slight caloric deficit. Uh, although I'm pretty sure people will call me out on this. I think even if you ate at McDonald's, but still had that slight caloric deficit, you'll still lose weight. Of course, like I personally believe eating organic is eating normal. A lot of times people are like eating healthy and kind of putting it under the assumption like that's not normal. I'm like, uh, the processed food is the stuff that's not normal. Eating right. organic is what eating normal is. Right. That's, that's, that's what eating normal is. But today it's kind of like the opposite, you know? If you ever heard it said, oh, I'm dieting, you know, like Depending that's the exception. Happened. Yeah. But like, yeah. Okay. Anyways. But yeah. So I tell the person like, look, man, you don't even have to work out. And this stands true for like predominantly the majority of people. You just have to have like a slight caloric deficit and preferably source those calories from organic sources, exactly. in my opinion. And that's yeah, I, I mean, I think that you're right on is I'm a big believer in not eating processed foods because that is not normal food. Like it is not a that's not on a farm. Like you can't get churros on a farm. Like you have to have like cows and chickens and, you know, real food. Yeah. And it all goes back to core priorities, yeah. you know? So if it's a high core priority, a lot of people have enough intelligence to learn how to be like very, very healthy, you know? So, but uh, yeah, all these things, like I don't have time or organic is too expensive or once again you don't even have to eat organic to lose weight but just an example all these like story weaving things basically like in between the lines it's just it's just saying like it's not a high core priority in my life at the moment so what do you what do you focus in with your like what kind of clientele are you after what do you uh, like who do you market towards so my my clientele is typically men who are over 27 to i think i have a 72 year old um, but most of my clients are executives, CEOs, CFOs, um, entrepreneurs, executive or accountants, CPAs, that sort of thing. And um, what, what kind of challenges do you feel like you have? Because I'm pretty sure they're working like crazy hours. But ironically, uh, I always at least found with my clients, like those clients still make the time, like those high, high achieving clients. So. Yeah, kind of talk about so that a, bit? a lot of my clients that are all high achieving want to live longer and their goals are to be healthy enough to run their business and they wake up early enough and they get to the gym. They make it the first thing in their day. I don't train in the evening. It's only training in the morning. So all my clients that are either executives in the mornings or either retired in the late after morning and they want to make sure that they're morning is off to a good start and that they're focused and ready to go and not groggy when they go to their first meeting or their first uh, board meeting or whatever it is. Yeah, so that was our very first podcast um, here at The Art of Strength. And this is The Art of Strength and Mind podcast with your host, Eugene Trufkin, and your co-host, Brandon Duff. And we are out of here. Have a good one. Peace. Hey everyone, go to our YouTube channel at Art of Strength and we're doing challenges and giveaways and all sorts of fun things. So go ahead and check out our channel. It will be linked in the show notes at Art of Strength. Check it out right now.
If you like our content and you want to have more of it, send us an email. It'll be in the show notes and tell us what you want to hear about. If you want the most recent updates from us and you enjoyed the show, please subscribe.